All right, so it's very important as we go into this section that you get into out of the I'm a student mentality, all right, uh, which most 17 to 25 year olds uh, spend money on entertainment um, and appearance uh, and get yourself into the homeowner mentality. And guys, most 30 to 60 year old homeowners spend most money on their kids and their house, all right? Um, so just so you guys are aware of that, um, but really important because I, I, I know when I first started this, I had no idea what things cost. And I was like, oh my gosh, you spend so much money on knives, you know? Uh, and this was really important. This was something that my manager did with me that really helped me to see, um, you know, the cost. Cause I spent money all the time on stuff, you know? Um, but I just, I had no idea what things in a home cost. And if you go into your demos thinking like, oh my gosh, so, so like who spends this? You're not gonna, you're not gonna sell a lot of Cutco, all right? They're gonna say, this is great, but that's too much, right? Um, Cutco is not cheap. It's expensive, it's an investment. Um, uh, it's made with the best quality, best materials. It's guaranteed forever. Think about if you have the best car, if you have the best house, if you have the best watch, if you, like what are you talking money-wise? Anyone? The best of anything costs money, right? Like you get the best of anything, it costs money. Um, and guys, you could look at anything, whether you're looking at nails, hair, cars, whatever. Like there's such a wide range of quality and prices with everything, you know? And so you could pay for cheap crap, you could pay for good stuff, right? Um, uh, and so just depending on what you value. So um, this right here, every one of you who's on this call right now knows somebody who's 20 years old that could buy a thousand dollars of product from you today, by the way. Um, uh, and um, uh, I, I highly doubt they're just going to pay you a thousand dollars in cash unless they're a drug dealer. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, they would pay just like our customers do. All right. Because as I mentioned before, the majority of our customers are middle class customers. All right. So let me show you what this looks like. So if we're going to, if you're going to have one of your 20 year old buddies buy a grand from you today, well, guys, um, I'm going to assume they're going to do it just like our average customer one, right? Which is not $1,000 paid in full because if, if somebody can just spend $1,000 um, without planning ahead for it, um, then they're upper income. Cool. By the way, is that a thing? Can people spend money? Do you guys, who knows someone that could go to the mall and spend $1,000 and not think about it? Raise your hand if you know someone like that. All right, you guys can go walk and just sit by the outlet and watch people at the outlet mall. It's insane how much people are coming out of the Nike store and the Polo store and the, the Kendra sky and all this stuff. And they have bags of stuff and like, oh, they got it discounted, but they spent $300 at this store, $200 at this store, $360 at this store, five, and like, and you're like, what, you know? And then there's people like, if you go to like Galleria Mall, well, I mean, almost every store there you come out, you know, and if they went to any of the, the fancier stores, right, you could spend a thousand dollars on a wallet at Gucci, you know? Um, uh, and again, that's more of a higher income customer, right? Um, uh, but um, people spend that money, all right? And so for some people, it's a little bit tighter, so it was more, but the people that can just walk in the store, buy a new bag, buy a new wallet, you know, buy whatever and not think about it, that's upper income, okay? So your middle income typically plans ahead, especially for investments, got it? Um, so they would do the investment option like I was talking about, all right? So I'm gonna go back to our little whiteboard here. Um, so they would not pay for this all today, all right? What they would pay today uh, would be the deposit, right? I talked about before um, the easy pay, all right, uh, which in this case would be 200 bucks, all right, would be the easy pay option. And this is what the customer would put down. Now question, who here knows somebody who has, put, uh, who has spent $200 before? Um, whether it was on um, jeans, uh, new sneakers, Nikes, whatever kind of sneakers they like, going out and partying, concert tickets. Raise your hand if you know someone who spent $200 before. All right, Brendan's pointing at himself. Who personally has spent $200 on something you really loved? You're like, I had to spend it, all right? Um, uh, so people spend $200 all the time on random stuff. Okay, so that's $200 for the month. Well, guys, let's break it down further and look at this and go, okay, well, $200 for the month.
month, what does that mean uh, that we're putting aside, right? Um, uh, well, that means that we're putting aside um, uh, 50 bucks a week, cool? 50 bucks a week is what you would put aside in order to get that. Who here knows somebody who's 20 years old who spends 50 bucks a week on stupid shit? Raise your hand, all right? <laughs> um, uh, I knew friends who spent that going out, going partying. I had friends who spent that on illegal substances. They probably shouldn't even spent it on, um, but people spend $50. And so when you look at our target market, which is husband and wife, you know, a homeowner, family, um, well guys, now you break that down even further and for the husband and wife, all right, that's $25 each, all right? So you guys tell me, can somebody who works full time afford a $1,000 order? Yeah, they might not be able to do $1,000 today, although we do have some customers that will buy a $5,000 order and put $1,000 down today, all right? Um, uh, but this year, it's 50 bucks a week, it's 25 bucks each, cool? I remember one of my bigger sales um, was uh, my friend Jennifer, um, uh, her dad, her mom and dad, right? So Mr. Ramirez was a mechanic, um, like a just, you know, small local mechanic um, uh, in not the nicest area of Miami, uh, Opalaka, uh, for if anyone knows South Florida, but that's where he was. And, um, and then Mrs. Ramirez was a preschool teacher. All right. So they didn't have a ton of money. Um, they're a middle class family. Uh, they didn't live in the nicest area. Uh, it was kind of like the fifth ward or so um, where my mom was like, call me when you get there. You know, I don't want you to go at night. Like, um, uh, and um, whatever. And we grew up lower income too. So like, it was fine, but I went over there and I remember doing that. And I thought to myself, they're totally going to buy four or 500 bucks, right? Like I showed you guys before that would be 80 to hundred bucks. It'd be 20, $25 a week, literally is all that they're putting aside, which would be 10 or $12 each. And they both work. Could they afford 10 to $12 each? Oh, hell yeah. So I knew I was going to sell a four or $500 set because they cook like crazy. I mean, Jennifer always brought food to school, right? So anyway, I do the demo. And, and I'm, I'm like waiting for them to say no to like the larger stuff just to get to the starters and like, boom, close my sale, right? Uh, that's what I was thinking in my head. Don't do that, by the way. Um, but I, I did the demo and at the end I said, um, hey, do you wanna go, you know, like I wouldn't be doing my job if I asked if you wanna go ahead and try out the homemaker. And he's like, well, yeah, but then I like this, this, what's this, and all. Anyway, he ends up picking $1,600 of stuff that he liked, right? Which I'm like so scared to even tell him the price. <laughs> And here's a big tip I'll tell you guys, be confident, cool? Like if you were selling Bentley or you were selling Rolls Royce, like imagine if the car salesperson, when you were like, oh, how much is this? They were like, eh, oh, it's 200,000. You know, like, no, like they're super confident. They know they're representing something that's the best of its kind, right? Um, and people can, you know, fight of like, which is the best? Is it Ferrari? Is it Lamborghini? Or is it Bentley? Or is it Rolls Royce? Or they're all freaking awesome cars, all right? Um, uh, and they're not cheap. And anyone you go to, like, you have to know what you represent if you're going to sell that, all right? Well, guys, you're representing the best of something. So know that and be confident. And again, it's not cheap. So he like $1,600 of stuff. So I remember telling Mr. Ramirez, I'm like, okay, well, Mr. Ramirez, um, just so you know, um, the stuff that you liked, all right, um, comes out to uh, $1,600, okay? I was like, you could pay for it all today, but most people don't. Uh, most people use our um, investment option, okay, our easy pay. And so basically what you would put down today uh, would be uh, 320 all right? Uh, and so that's the amount of the first deposit uh, of what you would put down, all right? Um, uh, so, um, basically if you guys, uh, kept, um, like did the, you know, kept the payments cause you can put that, try it out, see how you like it and then just pay it off or you can keep the easy pay each month. Cool. So if you do the easy pay, uh, basically what you want to make sure, um, to put aside, what you want to make sure to put aside per week is, uh, 80 bucks a week. And I said, so that's going to be 40 bucks um, um, each, okay? Um, so I remember showing them that um, uh, each in budget. So I said, um, so yeah, so it's 40, it's $80 a week you want to put aside. So it's about 40 bucks each um, in the budget. Um, and I said, is that something you'd feel comfortable squeezing into the budget? And he's looking at this and he was like, $40 each. 
I mean, what do you think? And so him and Jennifer start talking. And by the way, this is really powerful is you always want to have stuff written down. Got it? So whether you tell them over the phone to write it, you write it on the whiteboard, you write it on a paper and you show it on the camera, you've got to write prices down. It makes a really big difference. Okay. So he looks at it and he's like, hmm, he's like $40. I can do 40. Honey, what do you think? Can you do 40? She's like, I can put aside 40 each week. She's like, we just have to be tight. You know, we can't just like, when you go to the grocery store, you got to stick to the list, <laughs> you know, and all this. And I started laughing because my mom would always bitch at my dad about that. She's like, you, you didn't stick to the list. I gave you a list, <laughs> you know, and when you're on a like really tight budget, you know, like I can get real messed up <laughs> going to the grocery store. Um, uh, and I mean, come on, have you guys ever walked into Walmart for one thing and come out with one thing? If you have, you deserve an award. I don't know that I've ever done that. I'm like, I need this one thing. And I like run in. But then I'm going to pay and I'm like, oh, but I want a coconut water and chocolate, you know, and I just like got a couple more things. Um, uh, so that's just normal. All right. But anyway, so him and his wife talked back and forth and they said, okay, you know what? We can do it. Let's do it. He's like, do you take American Express? I said, yeah. He's like, all right, let's do it. This is what I said to him. Don't say this to people. I was like, really? You know, and he's like, yeah, really? I was like, oh, oh, okay. You know, and he started laughing. He goes, come here, girl. He goes, how much are those sunglasses you're wearing? All right. I love Ray-Bans. By the way, you're all going to have a chance to win a pair of free Ray-Bans. We'll talk about that tomorrow. But I'm um, chilling with my Ray-Bans on, you know, we're outside. And he's like, how much are your Ray-Bans? And I'm like, oh, 200 bucks. And he's like, okay. Uh, and I said, what? And he goes, how much is that? You know, and he's pointing to this wall unit of tools that he had in his garage. And I said, I have no idea, Mr. Ramirez. And he goes, guess. He's like, tell me how much. I'm like, I have no idea. And I'm literally 19 years old. And like, I've never used real tools. I had a little purple, purple toolbox from Target that I had for my dorm room. <laughs> and I was like, um, yeah, I have no idea. And he said, guess. I said, a couple hundred bucks. And he goes, I'm sorry, your Ray-Bans are a couple hundred bucks. He's like, try again. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I don't know, a thousand? He's like, Kathy, that's over $4,000 of tools. And I was like, what the? I'm like, are you kidding me? And he's like, no. He's like, and I'm going to recommend you to some of the guys from my shop, some of the guys from the church, some of the guys from the neighborhood. He goes, and when you see them, he's like, make sure to use craftsman tools and snap-on tools as an analogy, because that's what this is. Mechanics invest in snap-ons, and they're not cheap, and they'll buy little by little, or like a wrench set, or this set, a black set, I don't know, tools, um, and add to their collection, or they'll buy like a bigger set and finance it. He said, but you know, this is, this is great stuff. And he's like, and mechanics buy it because it's tools they use every single day and are going to have for the rest of their life. And so Cutco is that for the kitchen. You know, it's like, now we have our tools that we use every day and we're going to have for the rest of our life. And I was like, huh, you know, he's like, so when you go see them, he's like, know that you're representing a great product people actually use. And every mechanic knows like the, that it's just silly to, to purchase cheap tools. Like you want to invest in good tools. It's an investment and it's going to last you, you know? And I was like, huh, okay. You know, and that really helped me a lot because I was so shocked. Like I didn't, I was so surprised that I was selling $1,600 on this sale. Uh, I did not expect it at all, you know? And you guys, you know, don't, don't freak out, you know, don't be surprised. Like, I remember my mom telling me, don't go see Idania. Idania's not going to get anything. And Idania was, you know, a little bit lower income. She was the, the receptionist at the front desk at the nursing home. Uh, her husband was always like in and out of work, you know, and she was like, Kathy, you know, she's not, you probably shouldn't see her. And she's like, well, find out if her husband's working right now or not, you know, go from there. But I talked to Idania when I was visiting my mom one day for lunch. And I said, Hey, um, you know, I don't know if I'm told you, but I'm working with this company to get business experience, work on my communication skills. I get paid to show a product called Cutco. Um, you don't have to get anything. I get paid just to do it, you know, but I'd love to come over and do an appointment with you and your husband. Um, and she was like, um, yeah, sure. No problem, honey. You know? And so we planned an appointment in time and this again, not in the nicest area. They lived in a duplex. Um, uh, and so it wasn't like a top customer. Um, I was definitely more experienced, um, at this time. And so I was like, I got this, you know, and I went to go see them and, um, I ended up having a $900 sale, by the way, 
you know, but I remember when I broke it down, showed them the breakdown and it was like $30 each a week um, that they had to put aside um, so that they had the 60 bucks a week, uh, which was, you know, $240 a month. Um, actually, they got more stuff, but it was about 30 bucks each they had to put aside. And, um, and, and that was over uh, almost a thousand dollar order, right? Over a thousand dollar order. And I remember Jose, when I was there, <laughs> And I'm telling his wife and breaking down the prices. And I'm like, hey, it's $30 each. Da, da, da. And I said, do you guys feel you could squeeze that into the budget? And she was like, <sighs> she's like, I can do $30, you know, honey, can you pitch in $30 a week towards this? You know, and he was like, <sighs> I like smoking cigarettes in the house. He's like, and he was like, we can't do this. Like, we're not rich, you know? And she was like, this isn't for rich people. Um, uh, and they start talking and she's like, this is like, like snap on tools or, you know, cross something. Cause he kept coming in and out of the house doing the presentation. So I sat him down and I showed him everything real quick. I'm like, look, this is this, this is why it's cost. This is this. Da, da, da. And he was like, all right. You know? And she, she was like, look, either you stop smoking or I'm gonna start, you know, because we're getting these knives. So you quit smoking, we have the money. <laughs> I start smoking, you know, we use that money. Um, uh, but it was so funny, you know, and she's like, or you cook for yourself. <laughs> he was like, okay. Uh, but the fact was, <coughs> again, even though it was a thousand dollar order, and my mom was like, what? And I was super shocked that they bought that much. But when you break it down in the payments, do you guys see how easy that makes it for everybody when you break it down? And that's one of the best tips that I was given because when I started, because I did have a lot of customers that were middle, lower income, you know, um, uh, as I was, and um, using that the easy pay, like that's how I sold all my sets, all my sets. Um, uh, I remember the first time I had someone pay in full, I was like, oh, what? But what? Huh? You know, I was like, and it was my dad's old boss and they're super wealthy, you know? And she was like, yeah, yeah, just, just in full, in full. And I was like, are you sure you don't want to do the easy pay? She was like, honey, it's fine. I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, but like, again, that's not how I grew up, you know? And so I was like, but $3,000 is a lot of money. And she was like, it's okay. She's like, just charge it. And I was like, okay. Um, but again, this is the same lady that'll go buy a new Louis Vuitton purse next week, right? And spend about that much. So um, uh, my dad's old boss, his wife was doing pretty well, you know? So think about, you know, who are those heavy hitters that like love to entertain, like Donna. She loved to have parties. She loved to have people over. You know, who are people that like love to cook, right? Like love to cook all the time. Everyone goes there for Thanksgiving or Christmas or New Year's to eat all the damn good food. You know, who and who, who like everyone goes to their house to like watch the games, right? Like um, uh, last year for football season, think about, who loves to host parties and stuff. And so all these things um, come into play. And so as we go through, and I'm gonna go through and show you guys like what else is out there, what's the competition, what's everything. But you have to think about, you know, if I gave each of you guys here $1,000 or $2,000, I mean, who here would go buy knives? You know, probably none of you. <laughs> um, because unless you're like going to culinary school or like just really have an obsession with cooking. Uh, most, most people like that's not what they're running to go do because again, most 17 to 25 year olds are spending money on things like this. Right. Um, uh, and so whether it's um, appearance, hair, nails, concerts, you know, VIP tables, bags, shoes, whatever it is, like that's more of what people spend money on. Right. Would you guys agree? Um, uh, I mean, when I was 19, 20, I was like sunglasses, handbags, you know, going out and partying um, uh, is where I spend more money. Where now it's like house, what can we get for here, decorating the house, and then, you know, baby Benjamin um, uh, is where, where money flows now. When you look at a home and you look at what things in a home cost, I mean, this is a very simple, you know, a nice kitchen, but very simple refrigerators. And you guys can look at Home Depot. They're two, three, four, five thousand or more, depending if you want the best, right? Um, so two thousand, you're not getting the best, but it's a it's a really good one. It's a really good one. Um, dishwasher, depending what you get and what quality, you know, um, those will run. Um, but you'll notice is most things in the house, guys, are thousands, not hundreds. Uh, your dining set, hot thousands. Your sofa set, 
thousands. Like if you're buying a nice set that you want to have in your house for 10, 15, 20 plus years, you're spending thousands. A granite countertop, you know, like those will cost 10 grand on up. You guys can walk into Home Depot and just look. Cabinets, I mean, that's a little bit of cabinets. So it's like 10 grand plus, but depending what type of wood um, uh, you have, you could spend, um, there's people that have spent $200,000 on cabinetry before, okay? Or more. And you guys can go to Home Depot and get quotes and stuff and look at that. But just understanding so that you're not caught totally off guard, you know, like I was when it came to um, what knives cost. Um, but again, all these things, like when you were little kids, you know, and your parents, anyone ever like you're jumping up and down in the bed and your parents were like, don't do that. You're going to hurt yourself. Anybody ever hear that? All right. They didn't care if you busted your head. They didn't want you to bust the springs, man. That, that mattress cost $500 or more. <laughs> so your top of the line mattresses are over $1,000, right? Um, uh, I didn't realize until I bought my table at age 25 um, uh, why my dad was always like, don't lean back on the chair. Don't. He's like, you're going to replace that. And I was like, oh, all right. And I didn't get it. And I was like, oh. And then I found out later, holy shit. The average nice wood chair for a dining table costs 200 bucks, all right, for one chair. Um, and you guys can go do your homework and go to Home Depot, go to Rooms to Go, go to whatever furniture store. But that's the average price. Some are going to be like the one I'm sitting on was $279.99. Um, yes, $300 for one damn chair. Um, uh, and I remember freaking out at first, you know, and I called my dad. I'm like, is this for real? Like, is this like... Am I about to spend like two grand, like just on chairs, you know, and then the table is another, and my dad started laughing. He's like, yes, Kathleen. He's like, $3,000 for a nice dining table is a normal price. He's like, now as long, like, that's a nice, you know, like what's the, you know, and I told him like the wood that's used, there's marble on it. It's like real nice. And he was like, oh yeah. He's like, you should spend more than that. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm at rooms to go super center, like sales center in the sale room. <laughs> uh, and he's like, he's like, no, that's good. You know? And I had no idea. And I've, I've had this now for 12 years and I'll, I don't know how long I'll have it, but I, I love it. Um, uh, my table, you know? And so those are things you invest into and, you know, then when you're ready, like probably, I don't know, probably in five, seven years, like I'll, I'll get a new table because I want a bigger one, you know, that seats 16 to 20 people. So then, you know, we'll go, we'll go there. Um, but just understanding these things again and, and what costs money. So if you went to go get good knives, where would you go? Are you like, I'm going to go buy the best knives at Walmart? Yes or no? Thumbs up or thumbs down? No. All right. Walmart and Target, as my aunt likes to call it, uh, those stores were designed that anybody from anywhere of town, if they need anything right now, can go in and get it. Cool. That's what it's designed for. Nobody buys a home and goes, I cannot wait to furnish it with a Walmart collection. I'm so excited. <laughs> like, nobody says that. You buy stuff at Walmart, you buy stuff like, in between, right? Like, I bought a little coffee table in between until I found the one that I wanted. Like, I had a little table that I had bought uh, for our kitchen, you know, kitchenette or whatever at Target until I found a table that we ended up buying um, uh, that I really liked for it, right? And so I wasn't going to buy like really nice furniture until I found what I loved, right? Because it costs money and, I, and you're going to have it for 10 to 15 years or more, right? So anyway, Bed Bath & Beyond sells a wide array, all right? They have low, medium, and high quality. Crate & Barrel, Macy's, also low, medium, high quality. Willing Sonoma mostly has high quality, cool, and, and through the table. That's like your best kitchen stuff. They sell your best kitchen stuff, best kitchen gadgets, pots and pans, knives, all of that stuff. Cool. So if you guys walked into a store, just so you guys know, and you're like, all right, what's good stuff? Um, where are you going to go? Well, Macy's and Williams Sonoma is where you're going to get your best stuff. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Two most common brands um, uh, that have been around forever. The German brands, um, Henkels and Mustaf. And then there's also a Japanese brand called Shun. Um, uh, and um, Shun are really, um, really good as well. But these have been around over 250 years. They're very well known. So like if anyone plays guitar, you would know Fender, you would know Taylor Guitar. Like those are big names in guitar. Well, same deal with Knife World. Any chefs, any cooks, they know um, Henkels and Wusta. Um, They've been around forever. All right. So if you're going to buy good knives, you're like, all right, 
Well, what do I, what, how do I know that it's good quality, right? Well, we want to know where is it made? What's the material? What's the construction? You know, if you always want to screenshot this, these are the things you want to ask yourself, you know, when you're like, all right, what's a good knife, right? And so what I love about Cutco guys is that I'm not giving you an opinion. I'm not like, I think Cutco is the best. Like, no, let's just look at the facts. Let's just look at the facts and compare it. When we look at the handle, so you've got Chicago cutlery, Chicago cutlery, they're wood handled knives made in um, uh, Chicago, nope, uh, made in China, all right? Uh, but they're wood handled, they're stainless steel, and just to, to give you a little like knife knowledge here, okay? Wood is disgusting, you know, and you guys saw that in the video. Wood absorbs everything, it's porous, all right? Um, uh, long term, not good, all right? Um, there's so much bacteria that gets caught up in there. Um, brass rivets, they expand and contract. They're not good, all right? That metal is not good because then all the goop gets in between the rivets. And you'll see that in knives where it's like kind of black rings around the rivets. And the rivets are the little things that in the handle, right? If you see like the little pieces of metal in the handle, uh, and then sometimes they're just glued in, you know? So you won't see that in the handle. Um, uh, the tang, the tang is the part of the metal that goes into the handle. So how far does it go? So some knives, it's just glued right in. Some you can see, it's just, if this is the handle and the metal just goes to here and then you have the rest of the handle. And then some you see it go all the way through, cool? So full tang is what you want because that gives you great balance. Um, so Chicago does have full tang, all right? So their, their steel goes all the way through the handle, but it's stainless steel, all right? So what's the benefit of stainless steel? It's very clean, all right? So you guys are getting knife knowledge 101 right now, by the way. Um, but stainless steel is clean. They recommend stainless for all your kitchen stuff, cool? Pots, pans, everything, everything in the kitchen. Why? Because it's clean. The problem is, is that it does not stay sharp. It dulls very easily, okay? It dulls very easily. Um, so um, they have to be sharpened every time they're used, all right? And then if they're straight edge, holy crap, they dull even faster, okay? Um, so they have to be sharpened all the time because the cutting edge is coming in contact with the, with the surface. So with Chicago, wood, horrible. Brass, horrible. Full is good. They got one point there. Stainless, not good. Straight edges, not good. Have to resharpen every time they're used, not good. Um, uh, DWS is dishwasher safe, nope. They tell you not to put it in the dishwasher. Uh, they're made overseas in China, they have to be replaced, got it? So basically they got one point on all the things we're looking for. And a set like our homemaker, all right, um, uh, the homemaker set, which is um, the seven knives, two forks, and a spatula, and the eight table knives, right? A traditional butcher block set um, it is going to cost you about 200 bucks, all right? If you go to like, um, uh, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond or Walmart or whatever, and you see Chicago there. Then you've got Wusthof and Henkel's, all right? Um, very similar prices as Shun. Shun's a little more expensive. Uh, you're going to see that as well. Um, but the handles are polypropylene, all right? Polypropylene is actually a really high grade um, plastic. It's similar to what they use for the back of NBA, um, the, the boards where you shoot. Um, so um, that is really good stuff. It holds really good edge. Um, I give it a half point. It's not the best, but it's really good. Uh, thermal resin, like resins, that's the best. Uh, resins are what they used for like bowling balls, football helmets, inside of dishwashers, like all different types of resins. Uh, so we use thermal resin. Um, but back to Wusthof and Henkel. So polypropylene, uh, it's, it's, it's good. It's not the best. We give it half point. Uh, nickel silver, all right? Nickel silver is great. That, that metal, that alloy is phenomenal against pressure. So it's not going to loosen or pop out. Everyone got that? So that's really good. Um, uh, so they have that. So that's awesome. They have a full tang. That's awesome. They have surgical steel like we do. High carbon stainless. What it is, it's a combination. So you've got the stainless that's really clean. And then there's carbon. Carbon, um, I wish I had some of my knives to show you, but carbon, it, it rusts. It gets really rusty. All right, so you'll see it like dark, like black and have like orange spots on it. And they use it a lot for like axes, machetes, fillet knives, a lot of outdoor stuff. Um, uh, the problem again is that it, it rusts. Um, so they hold a great edge, but they're not super sanitary. All right, but when you combine the stainless and the carbon, you get the best of both worlds. It stays clean and it stays sharp, cool? And so that's what surgical steels are made out of. They're high carbon stainless steel, cool? 
So that's what um, Wusthof uses and Henkel's, and so do we, all right? Um, then um, they have straight edges, which is not good. You have to sharpen them every time they're used, and you have to sharpen them properly, which the average mom doesn't know how to do. Um, uh, they are not dishwasher safe. They're made overseas. They have to be replaced. So out of the nine things we're looking at, they had three and a half of the points, right? They had nickel silver, full tang, surgical steel, and the polypropylene was the half point. And then guys, let's look at cut coat. Thermal resin, best material that you can get, boom. Nickel silver, we already talked about that, great stuff. Full tang, boom, surgical steel, boom. Now, we have a double D edge. So anything that you're gonna drag on a board, it's protected with our special edge, you guys saw in the video. Um, that's a unique thing to cut coal. Um, uh, they have to be sharpened uh, every 10 to 15 years, cool? Um, I recommend them getting touch-ups every couple of years from a local representative. Um, but those suckers will stay sharp for a long time, especially the double D edge. The double D edge will cut the same way for 10 plus years without ever having to be sharpened. Uh, straight edges should be touched up every year um, uh, with, you know, at home and then professionally can be done every couple of years with a local sales rep. Um, uh, oh my God, thank you. Um, then you have your... Oh, um, then you have your, um, they're dishwasher safe. You can put them in there. They're made in the USA and they never have to be replaced again. Cool. So all nine points, boom. So I, that's what I want to show you guys. Cause it's like, it's not opinion, it's facts. And that makes me feel really good. And when you look at just how the world works, when then something's three times as good, offers three times the quality and value, what do you expect to pay in price? Anyone? Yeah, three times the price, right? Uh, that's normally how the world works. Um, uh, and and I love, and I'll, I'll go through our prices here in a little bit. Um, but just so you guys see here real quick, and you guys can do research online on your own. Um, but again, Henkel's is, you have the one little man. Those are not real. It's like Pono instead of Polo, all right? Um, and you got the two men. The two men on the bottom right, guys, that's the good stuff, all right? Um, and so those will range. I mean, there's different sets that range in quality and prices. But just know that if there's one little man, that's bad. If there's two little men, that's good. Cool? They've got the good stuff. And if they have good stuff, guys, they're telling you, I like good quality. I know quality costs money. Cool? And they're in one of two places. They're ready to replace or they're not. <laughs> so if they're not ready to replace, they always add because they like good quality. So they'll add things like our spatula, our steak knives. By the way, Henkel steak knives suck. Um, so they'll always add like our steak knives, our spatula, our super shears, all of our gifts and accessories, our flatware, our stainless flatware, our pots and pans. I mean, you can have a pretty sexy order to somebody who doesn't even buy a knife, okay? And we'll talk more about that tomorrow. You got Wustoff. These are number one in stores. Um, uh, and again, they've got low, medium, high quality. If you look at William Sonoma website, you'll see Wustoff Classic, you'll see Wustoff Icon, you'll see Wustoff Icon Blackwood, this one, uh, you'll see, there's, there's like eight different ones. All right, this is their top of the line. So think about like BMW, right? There's like one series, two series, three series, four series, five series, six series, seven series, M series, you guys with me? So same deal, just like there's like different, you know, brands, they're different prices, uh, or excuse me, different, different, you know, style cars here, different set models. Um, they're all different prices, all right? So their top stuff does retail for over 3,000, all right? That's what all your best knives are gonna cost in stores, and it retails for about two grand, all right? So again, this is the top of the line, and, and just so you guys know, you're selling a Ferrari or Bentley or Rolls Royce, you're selling it at a BMW price. Is a BMW cheap? No, uh, it's not. Um, uh, but you're getting a hell of a deal buying a Bentley for a BMW price. <laughs> so, uh, but the customer has to understand that they're getting that Bentley, all right? But the, two, the biggest differences, guys, um, uh, that, that, that are like deal, deal breakers for a lot of people is the guarantee, right? Because theirs covers warranty against defects only, like manufacturing defects. Um, and they have straight edges that have to be sharpened yourself. 
every time you use them, which most people don't know how to do, where for us, you have the double D edge to protect your knives. So they stay sharp for 10 plus years and they have the forever guarantee, which guarantees everything forever, forever sharpness, forever placement, misuse or abuse, um, 15 day unconditional money back. And I think that's pretty awesome that customers can feel super comfortable and confident that everything's covered for them. All right. So this is just going online. If you go to William Sonoma, um, uh, you know, the Henkels is called Zwingling, J A Henkels. Um, but these are different brands of there. So you can see different set sizes, right? The one all the way to the right is, is um, closer in size to the homemaker, but still not as big as the homemaker. Um, but it's 2655 on sale for $15.99. Um, uh, you have here um, the Wustoff um, icon, which we were showing you all the way to the left is a similar um, size to our homemaker set. Um, and that's 3325 on sale for two grand. Again, you have smaller sets as well um, uh, and different prices. Uh, this is from Macy's. Uh, Macy's doesn't carry the Wustoff, um, uh, the, the top uh, icon Blackwood, the full set. Um, they carry one that has six knives in it, um, or no, five knives, a scissor and a sharpener, um, which is 1300 you know, um, uh, but then they have on the top left there is, is uh, their cheapest, like their one series BMW, which is 1760 on sale for a grand, right? And then you saw the, the seven series fully loaded, which is the Blackwood Icon, which is 3,325 on sale for two grand. So just, just to know, again, that range of things. Um, so if someone says, well, I bought a, a loose offset at Macy's and I spent a grand or I spent 800. I didn't spend three grand, you know? Uh, well, obviously they didn't get a seven series fully loaded, right? They got a three series or one series, but just so you guys know that this is Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, uh, Wustoff, um, 36 piece set, two grand. This has the Wustoff Icon 22 piece set, like our homemaker um, on sale for 1600. Uh, then there's this Bob Kramer J.A. Henkel set. This is targeted more to chefs, guys. The average mom doesn't buy this, cool? It's five knives, it's $1,500. Um, and this is made for more people that cook, all right? Um, uh, and so that's like what they do for a living. And again, they wanna have the best, right? If you're a DJ, there's certain kind of equipment you spend money on. If you're a cyclist, there's certain things you spend money on, right? If you're a runner, like there's just like, if you have a hobby or interest or it's your profession, you spend more money um, on good things, all right? And then obviously you got Walmart, right? Um, so you guys can buy Chicago cutlery and this is a price for one knife, you know, $14, $20, but that's what they run is 15 to 20 bucks a piece, all right, um, for your cheap stuff. Um, your higher stuff is more in the 60 to $80, you know, um, on up, depending how big the knife is. So just so you guys are aware of that. And then Target, even Target, um, uh, if you guys look, they have options like up to 15. And I remember my manager showed me this. He's like, look, Kathy, there's a $200 set that we talked about, cheaper stuff. There's four, you know, 500, 1,000, 1,600. It's a bunch of random crap. It's not great, but he's like, they have those because think about, he's like, for, for fan, like if someone owns a home and they've been buying things for a home, when they see that number, when they see 1600, when they see that, like, they don't freak out, you know, like for them, like that's a totally normal number to see when it comes to investing into something for your home. Does that make sense to everybody? So they just bought like a nice new fridge at Home Depot. They just bought, you know, something else for the house. Like if they're buying like a new set of cutlery or kitchen stuff, like it's just normal to see those numbers. So um, I didn't get that at first. And once I did, that really increased my sales, making sure you guys have that understanding. Cool. Um, so I just wanted to make sure to walk through that. So you can screenshot this. This is basically the summary of what I just went through. Bad knives, um, uh, good knives are over a thousand, great knives are over 2,000, the best knives are over 3,000. So just depending what quality you're buying, what grade you're buying, uh, the prices are different. Everyone good? All right. Um, uh, and guys, don't forget, again, as you go into demos, do not let um, the price keep you from, um, from doing a great job because money's different at different times in our life. And I remember, again, at 19, 
money was very different than it is for me now, right? But think about even since you're little, like when I was five years old, did anybody ever get like a, a birthday card from grandma with like $5 in it when you were little and you're like, I'm the richest person in the world. Anyone with me or was I the only person who got really excited? Thanks, Brianna. Um, and I remember being like, yes, and putting it in my piggy bank, you know? But then it's like when I was 12, was I that excited about $5? Like, no. But my mom gave me 20 bucks and dropped me at the mall with my friend. I was like, yeah when I was 12, you know, but then when I was in high school, was 20 bucks that exciting? No, you can't even take someone lunch at, Ch at Chipotle. You're like, hold the guacamole, dude. I only have 20 bucks, you know, like, <laughs> so, um, uh, like that's a fact. And then you go to college, you know, and all of a sudden in college, so in high school, hundred dollars is like, you're the big dog, you know, it's all about the Benjamins. When you go to college, it's like a freaking textbook cost over a hundred dollars right um uh and so for a college student for a semester a thousand dollars can be pretty exciting i was fired up with a thousand bucks i was like dude that's ramen noodles dollar menu dollar picture night out i am set for this for the semester right um but then when i moved out that was very different because now i had my apartment and my bills and all these other things so what i'm what i'm walking through guys is that as life happens and as you grow up like money's different and your and your relationship to money is different cool and you view money differently so keep that in perspective um, because most of you are not 30 to 60 married homeowners um, uh, and you want to show up um, understanding that realm and not being freaked out about um, the price. All right. Because it, again, it's, it's not cheap. It's an investment. Um, but this is the last thing I want to hit on, which is the most important thing to you guys making sales. If you guys hit this and you get this and you do this properly, um, uh, you're going to, you're going to have a lot of sales. All right. And if you don't, you won't. <laughs> so, uh, price versus value. Um, uh, can someone tell me, all right. Can someone tell me what is price and Cass or Claudia, if you can help me unmute anybody, I can't do much on my computer. What is price? Anybody? There we go, I can get to the chat box. All right. Anyone tell me what price is? This is not a trick question. It's what something costs. Got it? Everyone good? I wanna make sure you're all with me. All right, thank you. The dollar amount of an item being sold. Yep, that's price. What's the value? What's the value of something? Anybody? What it's worth. Thank you, Brianna. All right. Um, uh, yes. So what we're talking about here is what something costs versus what something is worth. Everyone got that? All right. So that's what we're talking about here. So in order for a sale to happen, okay, the value must be greater than the price, equal or greater to. All right. For example, like when, the, when something costs more than it's worth, you're like, oh, what a ripoff. That costs more than it should. Are you like, yep, I'll take it. No, hell no. All right. I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> All right. Now, when something costs what it's worth, like it's, it's the price that it should be. Like, you know that that's, that price is fine. Do you buy it? If you need it, right? If I need it, I get it. If I don't, I won't. I'm not going to stock up when it's normal price. All right. But I'll get it if I need it. I won't if I want but, but if there's a hell of a deal uh, at the store on something um, uh, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is, this is like amazing. Like normally I pay $50 for these shirts and they're 20 bucks right now, you know, or black beans are on sale, buy one, get one free or whatever it is. Like I will stock up my house. All right. Um, uh, and that's cause there's a great value. Right. Um, uh, and I'm like, oh my gosh because I'm getting more for my money. Um, has anyone ever been to a store? Maybe you were going to buy like a birthday present for someone or a Christmas gift or something. And then there was like stuff that was on sale and you're like, oh my God, I have to get this. And you weren't planning on buying anything for yourself, but then you saw these great deals and you're like, I have to get it. Raise your hand if you've ever done that. Anybody ever done that? Okay. Yeah. All right. And that's because the value was great. All right. So guys, what you have to understand is when the presentation starts, the only thing that exists right now is that Cuckoo is a big price. Cool. 
the only value that exists right now is that they trust you and that you like it and they're like, all right, you know, like that brings some value, right? If your friend recommends something, that brings some value. Um, it's just not enough to cover the price, right? Now, by the way, this is great because like a lot of this is done for us during the video, all right? But you can add to it, all right? Uh, and so when we talk about the company and we're like, hey, keep a lookout, like Kaku has been around and, and, you know, it says it in the video, but it's like Kaku has been around since 1949, you know, um, uh, that's pretty cool. Like the company's won a ton of awards. Um, so they see that, you know, like in the video, I don't know if you guys caught the penny being cut, you know, but like, that's something that you want to be like, Miss Jones, did you see that? You know, like, they're like, oh my gosh. Uh, I'm like, rewind it if you missed it. Um, uh, but like, that's super impressive, you know, when they see what they can do, when they see it cutting the tomato, when they see it cutting um, uh, in the video as they're explaining the stuff, that's super impressive, all right? Um, and so now they're like, man, I need, I need new stuff. And, and again, the video does this for us, but are you pointing out, like, oh, Miss Jones, do you have stuff like that? You know, like, do you find it hard to cut sometimes? And they're like, oh yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so good when you have, you know, like, great knives and like easy products to work with right and then the video tells them about the features of Cutco, right and so that builds value there but now it's your turn okay how to use them and so now after the video you're telling them oh here's how this is used and you're walking through your manual and now they're like oh my gosh I didn't know, you know, like I heard that from so many customers and they were just like blown away um, by that, all right? Um, and then, you know, and they see, and I'm like, oh, you see how, how easy that is? Oh my gosh, it's so much quicker. It's so much like, do moms like to save time? Yes or no? Absolutely, okay? So, you know, bringing up how it saves time, like that builds value, all right? When you finish going through that, I'm like, Ms. Jones, you never have to ever buy anything again, right? When you do that summary and you told them, like Brianna did the summary before, you know, and you're like, hey, you know, you save this much, you do this, and you never have to buy it again. That's building value. And they're like, oh, wow, okay, that's awesome, all right? Guys, if they understand this, if they get this, do you think you're gonna have a sale? Almost every single time you will have a sale. Now, who here wants a bigger sale? Anyone want a bigger sale? Raise your hand if you want a bigger sale, all right? Well, if you want a bigger sale, which by the way, your customers can be fired up. The more cut they have, the happier they are. They love, the, they love their stuff, all right? There's one more thing, is how can I afford it, right? And can anyone tell me how we, how we showed them like, how can everyone afford it? What do you want to show them? Use that chat box. Use that chat box. Thank you, Dusty. Easy pay, baby. Um, uh, perfect. So you want to show them that because that's where they're like, oh, I can do that, right? So again, a customer might be like, ooh, I don't know that I can do $1,000. But all of a sudden, when you break it down to 50 bucks a week and you're like, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, it's $25 each that you'd want to put aside in the budget. Is that something you feel comfortable with? They're like, oh, I can do $25, right? So it makes it a lot more um, chewable, right? Uh, so that makes a really big difference. So just so you guys know that, all right? Um, so in terms of closing the sale, I mean, we've walked through a lot of this stuff here um, together, all right? Um, and I'm just, I wanna walk through, because guys, here's the deal. When it comes to high quality cutlery, it's like anything else, got it? There's a wide range of quality and prices. Cutco's top rated, so we only compare to the highest quality stuff. All right. Um, and so I have, you know, um, uh, you know, we show them a price comparison uh, for um, Wustoff and Shun, which are the top two sold in stores. And again, Wustoff is the most popular. These are top rated, uh, made overseas. And guys, these brands, like I mentioned, have different sets that range in price. Okay. Um, so the price for the Wustoff set, like you guys saw, is 3345 You can find them on sale for two grand. Um, and there are some differences between us and them. Um, so they, you know, again, they have to, they're not supposed to be put in the dishwasher. They have to be sharpened every time they're used. The warranties against defects only. Where with Cutco, all right, um, uh, you have the forever guarantee, all right, 
Um, uh, you have uh, the universal wedge lock handle that fits every hand perfect, left, right, everybody nice and snug. All right, um, uh, and that's the ergonomics with it. Um, uh, and then you have the, everything's here in Jeep forever. Forever sharpness, forever placement, mischief reviews, all of it. Cool. Um, and so that's really, um, really amazing. So most people who own Kotko will tell you it's like 10 times better than any knife they've ever used. I know most of you guys haven't had a chance to really use Cutco that much yet, but considering the unique features and the guarantee, most people agree Cutco is at least twice as good as the overseas brands. And guys, when something's twice as good, offers twice the quality and value, what do you expect to pay in price? Twice the price, right? Uh, and so even if we use the sale price, and I just want to show you guys this, um, if we use the sale price of the 2000, um, uh, then we are looking at, and let me go ahead and clear all this. Uh, we would be looking at 4,000 for a basic set of Kotko. So it would be like buying a really nice refrigerator, um, uh, a really nice um, like sofa set or, you know, bedroom set, um, or a really nice set of snap-on tools or golf clubs, right? Um, so uh, as I mentioned before, our homemakers are most popular set. Uh, it's perfect for families that cook two to four times a week, has the 10 basic tools that we explained earlier, and the eight table knives. Um, the great thing is that it doesn't cost $4,000, although it would be uh, if it was sold in stores, okay? Um, uh, as a matter of fact, um, Auntie, remember I was telling you about the Wustoff, it's 300, um, 45, 3,345. Um, uh, so actually ours is not as much as that either. All right. So uh, you actually wouldn't, um, oh, there we go. Sorry. Um, so you wouldn't pay for that all today. Uh, I mean, you would, that, that's not the price of it either. All right. Our homemaker plus eight um, is actually only uh, 1326. Cool. Um, and so, Auntie, you could pay for it in full, uh, but most people don't. Uh, most people didn't put away a couple grand waiting for the knife girl, right? Uh, so, what most of our customers um, do is that they use our um, easy pay option, all right? And so, what that is, it lets you put down a deposit of 289 to just try the products and see how you like it, all right? Um, uh, so, that would be um, the deposit that you'd put down. And just so you know, you'd have um, three weeks from when you got it to use it, abuse it, make sure you love it. Um, worst case, send it back. Um, highly doubt that's gonna happen. <laughs> Everyone loves this stuff more when they get it. Um, but you do have that option that you can send it back at 100% of your deposit back um, uh, or pay the same amount each month, all right? And so the easy pay <coughs> would have come out um, so basically, you want to put aside 72 bucks a week in the budget uh, is what you want to put aside, um, and that will break down to uh, 36 bucks um, each, all right? Um, so we have something called a buy now bonus, and a buy now bonus is um, a reason to buy now versus later. So if you wanted to get that today versus waiting till later, uh, you could actually pick out uh, the entertainer pack or the scissors as a free gift from me. Cool. So um, Auntie Cass, um, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask. Do you want to go ahead and try out the homemaker and get your free gifts? Yes, I do want to try out my free gifts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And by the way, very, very rare do you get a yes right away like she did, all right? Very rare. And if they say yes right away, by the way, that's typically not just going to be a homemaker. Uh, it's typically going to be a larger set or a homemaker with a bunch of other accessories, cool? Because the average sale is made on the fourth or fifth attempt, just so you guys are aware of that, okay? Most customers, when you say, hey, Auntie Natalie, you know, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask, do you wanna go ahead and get that today? They do this.
And by the way, um, uh, sometimes they're silent for a minute or two. Okay, I was just silent for less than 10 seconds and that's still awkward. Uh, but it's super awkward sometimes because for you, you're like, shit, like, what do I say? What do I do? Like, it's so quiet, so awkward. But guys, it's not quiet. It's quiet to you, but is it quiet to them right now? Hell no, they're having a full on conversation up in here. They're like, I wasn't planning on buying anything today. Holy shit, this stuff is really good. Do I need it? Am I gonna use it? Are we gonna, you know, they're like going through their consumer buying questions. Everyone has questions they ask themselves when they're buying something, you know? And it's like everything someone could ask themselves. Like, is it high quality? Is it good materials? Is it gonna last? Is it like, everything you would ask is like, yes, 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 yes. The only thing is like, can we do it right now, right? And that's why you wanna have it written down on a paper that they can look at over on the computer um, or you can use the whiteboard feature if you're using zoom but that way they can stare at that and go hmm honey what do you think and talk and be like yeah we can do 36 dollars each we can do it you know um, uh, and they just look at their budget you know and see if they can squeeze that in and by the way if they're not comfortable doing all that right now because they have like their son had a car accident and the roof caved in and I don't know what else happened because stuff happens. Then we just drop down and we find whatever they're comfortable with today. Cool. And in the future, we can always upgrade them. And we're going to show you guys that tomorrow. Everyone good? All right. So we're going to do that tomorrow. So I'm going to give you guys right now, we're going to take a five minute break. All right. Uh, so we'll be back um, in five minutes, uh, 4.13ish. Um, uh, and we're going to dive into the next part, but I want to give you guys time to go stretch, stretch your bums. Actually, you know what? We're going to, we're just going to start at 415. All right. We're going to start at 415. So go stretch, go grab water, go grab whatever you need, uh, and come back ready to kick some booty.